Let's turn now to an icon on and off the tennis court. It all ties to this moment from tennis star Andy Murray back in 2017, correcting a reporter who overlooked the incredible accomplishments of women like Venus and Serena Williams by focusing only on male players in tennis. Andy, Sam is the first U.S. player to reach a major semifinal since 2009. How would you describe Male player. The... I beg your pardon? Male player, right? Yes, yeah. first male player. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> So that moment and many others may never have happened without the trailblazing leadership of our next guest, Billie Jean King, who won 39 Grand Slam titles in her storied career. But that, of course, is just part of her legacy. Billie Jean has emerged as a leading voice for fairness, equality, and social justice in sports and beyond. And the legendary tennis champion joins us now. She's author of the new autobiography, All In, also with us. Editor at large for the nonprofit newsroom, the 19th, and an MSNBC contributor, Aaron Haynes. Good morning to you both, Billie Jean. It's so great to have you back on the show. Uh, tell us how. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm... Yeah, it's great to see <laughs> so you. What many was people. it like to see you? You have a real and... team there. I like it. We got the full squad for you, Billie Jean. So okay. What, what, what was the... it like Whoa. to sit down and sort of capture your your life and your career, and now your legacy? Whoa! It took over four years. It was a lot of work. I had a lot of help. Uh, obviously, and had researchers because you think you remember things, and then they go, "Well, there's a newspaper clipping from you know 1960," and I go, "Whoa, I'm not even close." So I had to really go back and dig deep. Some of it was very painful uh, to relive, um, especially when I had to go in the studio and read it uh, for the Audible edition, and uh, had to stop a few times. Uh, and other times it was great to reflect on friendships and relationships and why things happened the way they did and how, you know, because uh, the players, you know, stayed together, we were able to change things for the positive. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. So it's, it's been a roller coaster. It's been hard. But I thought, you know what, everyone's been bugging me to do it for a long time. The last time I really did this type of book was in the 70s. I've had a lot of life since then. And, uh, I just hope that maybe, you know, I talk about sexuality, I talk about my eating disorder, I talk about all these things um, that I hope will make a difference maybe in somebody's life, that maybe it'll help them uh, become their authentic self or just look at life a little differently for themselves and maybe be positive. Billie Jean King, uh, good morning and thanks for being here. It's Jonathan Lemire. I wanted to, as you were talking just now, we were showing clips, uh, images of you standing with some of the superstars of today's games, the Williams sisters and Naomi Osaka. And, and I wanted to get your thoughts on the state of the game now, not just on the court, but off. Uh, Ms. Ms. Osaka is someone who has generated a lot of headlines for her approach to mental health. We saw that again at the Olympics with Simone Biles. Uh, and I think that many people credit uh, people being open about it, like yourself, to allowing people to feel free and have the ability to talk about those things. See, show us, talk to us about the progress you've seen on issues like that uh, since you were playing. Well, first of all, um, as a 12-year-old, when I had my epiphany, I wanted tennis to be a platform. And what I love about the, the young players today, the players that are playing, is that they're using tennis. They're using it in a positive way to make this world a better place, to talk about issues that matter, like Black Lives Matter, or in this case, mental health. And, uh, you know, Naomi's fantastic. What a great champion. And, of course, Simone Biles can't say enough about her. But I think it's great that they talk about it. Now that we have social media, in the old days we didn't have this. There's a way to communicate faster, Sometimes better, sometimes yeah. not so good. Uh, it can be, it has, that's a you know, double-edged sword, as we all know. Uh, but I think it's good. We could, we're all talking about it. That's what's always helpful. And maybe it'll help them uh, get some help. I, I'm big on, on therapy. I'm very big. I've had a lot yeah. of therapy. And it's really helped me a lot. So I hope that they reach out. Also, I think we need better rookie schools in that when you want to become a professional athlete or a top athlete or Olympic athlete, that there's a lot that comes with that. It's just not playing a tennis or if you're a gymnast, do what you do. It, there's a lot more to it. And the media mm -hmm. is a huge part of why we make the money we make today. And I don't know if they have that connection. Uh, but we also know that money is not everything. Your, your personal health is the most important thing. Health uh, is wealth. And so I just I hope that everyone takes a break. And if it's too much, if it's too much, don't play. Take good care of yourself. Uh, right. but I've always right. thought about privilege. I mean, I've always thought about uh, pressure as a privilege. I have the saying, pressure is a privilege. But I also think about pressure as you can 
you can be a, a friend or a foe of it. And uh, I always, I, I try to uh, welcome it. And uh, it's Mika here. I'm wondering hi, also, Mika. I know that hi, money's not everything at the same time for women. Uh, talk about equal pay, because back in our day, it was untoward to ask for equal pay or even ask for a raise. <laughs> I know, but I'm, I keep encouraging women to follow the money because boys are taught to follow the money and girls are not. That's right. And I want girls to follow the money because money equals power, choice, freedom, mobility, all these things. So it's important. So that was one of our fights in our sport. In 1970, eight of, uh, nine of us all together signed a $1 contract, and that was the birth of women's professional it. tennis. And without us, they wouldn't be making the money. And without the, all the businesses that have gotten behind it, um, and, and believe in us, uh, would, you know, in 2007, we finally got equal uh, prize money uh, in all the majors. The men and women get equal prize money today in tennis, and that's why we are the leaders in women's sports. The new autobiography is all in. Billie Jean King, thank you so much. So tight on time today. We'll have Aaron Haynes on tomorrow. That does it for us this morning. Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage after a short break. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.